Configuring extended access lists on Cisco routers at Ninja Speed. Well, let's give ourselves a little scenario to start off with. We've got a computer up here trying to access a computer down here using HTTP and HTTPS, and we want it to stop, right? So an access list, let's hit the foundations. An access list is nothing more than a list of statements. Think of it as a big sheet of paper. We'll give that sheet a name. We'll call it 150. Uh, and on that sheet of paper, we have all kinds of different statements. Permit this, allow, deny that, allow this, allow this, deny that, don't allow this. So all of these statements do something. And if you reach the very bottom of that sheet of paper, you'll find one statement you can't really change, but it's always there. It's actually deny all. So if you make it through that list and reach the bottom, you're not a hero. You're going to be blocked because that's the rules of an access list. Now, you can overrule that by maybe putting a statement right before that that says permit all, but that's not the default. You have to put that in there. So with that in place, let's talk about where to put this thing. Cisco's best practice says always apply extended access list as close to the source as possible. Why is that? Because an extended access list can say you're this source and you're trying to go to this destination uh, and you are going to be denied. So why would I have that person travel all the way down here just to find out they're going to be denied? It's like driving to Disneyland just to find out it's closed. We don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to block them as soon as I can, which I would say would be as as soon as they come in that interface, and I said all these ports are fast Ethernet at 0 slash 0, fast Ethernet at 0 slash 0 on router 1, right? All right, let's bring up our GNS3 world and get going. I'm going to open the console of router 1, bring it into scene, and we are going to go straight into global configuration mode, config T. Now, access list can have names. I'm going to use a number for now, so I'll type in access uh, dash list and you can see the number ranges that are right there we want an extended access list which allows us to block on protocol on port number on source on destination on time range there's a ton that you can use as a factor in an extended access list so the first thing it's going to ask us is what's your statement well my goal is to deny so I'm going to say deny now it's going to say well what protocol this is where a little knowledge has to come into play most protocols that we use for applications use TCP that's a, a reliable mechanism and this is no exception so HTTP and HTTPS both belong to the TCP family, so we fill that in and now it's going to ask for the source. Source address is our 192.168.1.50 and now it's going to ask for a wildcard mask. A wildcard mask identifies exactly what is significant about that. What do you want the router to look at here? In a broad brushstroke nutshell, if I put a 0.0.0.0, .0, that tells the router, look at every single one of these octets of the IP address. If I were to type in 0.0.0.255, that means uh, go ahead and look at the first three and then ignore this one. So it says, if I were to do that, it would be deny everybody coming from the 192.168.1 subnet. Since it's just one host, I can type in 0000, or I could use the shortcut. You probably saw it coming up when I typed in right here. Host 192.168.1.50. Both of those do the same thing uh, with a wildcard mask. Now notice if I type in host, it doesn't ask me for a subnet mask. Now it's asking for a destination. So I'm going to say, I'm going to deny the host 192.168.1.50 to the host, so I don't have to type in a wildcard mask, 192.168.1. Uh, oh, wait, 2.50. Now, it's going to say, okay, give me a little more information about that. If I hit the enter key right now, all TCP traffic is going to be denied from this host to this host. And that's not what I want. I just want to deny that one or two port numbers. And then there just happens to be a wonderful keyword here, EQ, which says equal to. So I'm going to say on ports equal to, and you could type it in here, but Cisco has not updated this list since... Pfft, since uh, Adam and Eve walked the earth. I mean, you see things like Gopher. Uh, I, I mean, things we just haven't seen since Windows 3.1 was around, right? So I just don't even worry about the names. Just type in the port number. HTTP happens to be port 80. Hit enter. We've added our first statement. Now I hit the up arrow and do 443. That's HTTPS. So I now I actually have, let me do a show access list. I have an access list that has two statements. First statement says deny this host to this host using port 80, and then deny this host to this host using port 443. Historically speaking, this is where a lot of devastating mistakes have been made. People see that and they go, okay, great, I've got it. Now I'm going to apply that to an interface and they cause a complete network outage. That's horrible because remember, when we have an access list at the very bottom is a deny all. If we only have statements saying deny and deny and then we apply that, then that essentially denies everybody because there is no permit in there. So I need to add one more statement to that access list. I'll do access list 150 and let's say permit... 
and I'll, I'll say the IP protocol. IP is everything. TCP, UDP, NOS, OSPF, everything that you can see in this list is all included in, inside of IP. So I'm going to say IP from any source to any destination address. By the way, that is how we effectively overrule the deny all at the bottom of that access list. Now I'm feeling a little more warm and fuzzy about this. I'm going to do my show access list. I can see that I've got the two deny statements. Don't let this, don't let this, but everything else is allowed. Okay, now I have to apply it. We saw that Cisco's best practice says as soon as that host comes into play, we should be able to block them. So I'm going to go to interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and use the command IP access group and then I'll type in the access list number I want to apply. It's going to be access list 150 and in. Got to, when, when you're trying to figure out the direction, this is probably one of the most difficult things where people get stuck. you kind of like, well, in from where? Like, is it this one coming in? I mean, what what is? When you're thinking about this, be the router. I'm serious. Hold your arms out. Those arms are not arms. They are interfaces. You've got one arm that is a, an interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. You've got another arm, that's, that's fingers, by the way, that is serial 0 slash 0. You're holding them out, and you're saying, okay, where's this traffic coming from? Well, as it's coming in my left arm there, depending on which direction you're looking, as it's coming in my left arm, that's where I want to restrict it. Not as it's going out. Out would mean it's leaving that interface, and it's not. It's coming in. That's where I want to do my denials from. So if you remember that you are a router, you should be good. At this point in time, we now have those restrictions applied. This host will not be able to reach uh, the host down here using port uh, 80 or 443. There is probably a bajillion other things I can show you with extended access lists, but I want to know if this has been valuable for you. So below this video, please let me know if you like this and then what other topics you would like to see. For now, my name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.